Hello. Today I'm looking at the 65 watt PD Power Trio adapter, adapter trio from Samsung. You can see this one has two USB C ports and a USB A port. If you're new to the channel, there's a whole series on these power adapters where I test them for the power in and out while also comparing them to other offerings. There are billions of power adapters in use, and this series will help you make an informed buying decision since not all devices are created equal. Let's get into it. So Samsung's definitely done some work to simplify their packaging. And then the box itself actually gives us our various different outputs, which I tried looking at this and I just got so confused about what it can do. So here it is, fixed plugs. It's got their super fast charging. Because the ports are all different, it is nice that they actually label them for us. So we see a 65 watt port, a 25 watt port, and a 15 watt port. They do put all the specs on the side. Again, we see the 6 for DOE efficiency, and we see the UL logo. So it has its safety listing, it has its DOE efficiency. See the model number, EPT6530. The packaging weighs 22 grams, quite light. The power adapter weighs 155 grams, definitely on the heavy side. When compared with the Anchor Nano 2 65 watt, that only weighs 115 grams. I had somebody ask in the comments about whether or not there was a power adapter that could do the 45 watt fast charging on multiple ports and I was hoping that this adapter would be the one that could do that but because of the way they divided these ports up and the max total 65 watts capable of this device, uh, it looks like this doesn't meet that requirement. You can charge at 25 watts and 40 watts though. All right, let's plug it in and see how it does. Shameless plug, you can see I have all these other Samsung power adapters here. There's one missing because I'm using it right now. And next week I'm going to do a video where I compare all these different Samsung adapters to each other. So tune in next week and we're going to see the rundown of all the Samsungs. Not bad, so the idle input power for this one is about 50 milliwatts. You can see little peaks here and there, but for general, in general it's around 50 milliwatts, 60 milliwatts. That's not bad for a 65 watt class device. We can see over here that the current is a little bit high for idle, and you can see that VA number is pretty high. So it is it's doing some work there. So we get our red light over here. So that means we have multiple modes. You can see our five volts up here on this analyzer. So there's nine volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, 11 volt PPS, 15 volt, 16 volt PPS, and a 21 volt PPS. So this does again have the most modes. It skips 12 volts, but that's okay, that's optional. So this can charge a lot of devices because it has all these different modes. So we can see it's handling the 6.5 watts, no problem. We can see our power factor stayed low. Let's try changing through the modes, see if anything changes. So we got 9, 15, 20, 11, 16, 21. So we can change through the modes with the power on, no problem. Power factor correction type situation going. Let me turn this power up a little bit. So let's take it up to 40 watts. So what we see already is that we don't have power factor correction. You can see that power factor sitting around 0.55. It's quite efficient, you know, 44 watts in for 40 watts out, so that's not bad. So we see about three and a half amps on the input side right now for the 65 watt load. So that's the peak current. So that's not exactly nice. Here we have a nice image of what this thing is doing to the power. So this yellow line, that is our voltage. The green is the power trace. And the red, you can't see one of the red traces, but it's underneath this green one up here. This is our current. Ideally, the yellow line and the red line and the green line would all be the same line, except for the power line would all be positive. And this is where power factor correction comes in. It can correct that a little bit and give you a nicer, cleaner wave. So when I use these terms like THD and power factor correction and all these different things, this is effectively a visual representation of that situation. We're looking for the yellow line and the red line to be identical to each other. Okay, so here's an example. I brought in a power factor corrected device and we're running at the same 65 watts on the output side. And one of the things we see immediately is the current range of the analyzer is way lower. So we actually ranged up here. But one of the things we see is the red trace is a much more sinusoidal like shape and it is much more closely following the yellow trace. We don't see that big spike popping out and we're seeing a much cleaner uh, power waveform and voltage waveform. Okay, so one of the things this power adapter has is multiple ports. And so we have it connected up over here. We're getting 20 volts over here. I have my B grade tester off on the side and it's giving me nine volts right now. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. 
and it dropped down to five volts. So when you plug in or unplug another port, it actually changes the mode of operation. Okay, I have the secondary load set up at 25 watts right now. We're drawing 40 watts off of this primary port. Let's go ahead and take it up a little higher. So we're actually drawing the 65 watts right now, total. 42, 43, 44 watts, and it's off. So they don't give you much leeway on that. It does see it does recover to the five volts. So with multiple ports plugged in, they are they this thing's doing 65 watts, and that's that's what it will do is 65 watts. It doesn't really give you much more than that. But it can power multiple ports. And the one thing that did happen is when this overloaded on this cable here, the other one stayed on, still holding the nine volts. The 25 watt port maintained its output while this port uh, overloaded and shut down to zero. Let's take it up to overload and see what it can do overall. So we got 65 watts. 66 watts, 67 watts, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, wow, 75 watts, 76 watts, oh, and there it goes. This device is able to push out about 75 watts. That's pretty good, about 10 watts past its rating, so it's got a, you know, not too conservative overload condition. It can push a little bit beyond that and uh, maintain its output. You can see it did recover back to the five volt condition. Okay, so overall this Samsung power adapter has some issues. Although the efficiency is pretty reasonable, it draws a lot of current and it has very high THD. The numbers get pretty out of line for a good range of the output. Power factor is very, very low on this device. So that means we're drawing a lot of VA. So basically, yes, it has this higher efficiency for in the device, but it's basically torturing your grid to achieve that higher efficiency. And as we saw, uh, had very high peak currents, which we don't want to see. That peak US value topping out at about 98 on this device. Not amazing. When we look at this compared with other devices in the 65 watt class, especially, we can see that this is the bottom of the range as of right now. So this is your lowest go-to in terms of power quality. So overall, Comparing with other devices, we can see this got a score of 86, which isn't amazing, and actually puts it at the bottom of the tier for a 65 watt class device. When we look at the idle power consumption, it is actually pretty good. Samsung seems to do a good job at this idle state, and it has reasonable power quality in that idle state as well. And just verifying, this does meet the US DOE class six and the California Energy Commission requirements for a power adapter. When we look at this on a graph, we can see that it's towards the bottom of the, of the stack, basically. So for that overall power, you know, that, that PQS puts it on the lower side, and yeah, it's just not going to hold up compared to other devices. When we look at the idle, you can see that it's, it's actually a little bit on the strong side. So it, it's, it's good for idle, and the power is reasonable when that idle state is happening. So it's like a mixed bag, right? You got a little bit of positive, but you got some negative. So overall, the Samsung adapter got an 86 out of 200 for the power quality score. Paired with the Amazon Basics, which got a 99. The cost for this device is about $57. So it's definitely on the high side. This does have multiple ports. We saw it has the UL safety listing for Canada and US. And overall, the device seems solid. It's, it's well built. So if you gave me the choice, I wouldn't buy this power adapter. So I have all these different Samsung power adapters. And, uh, you know, tune in in the future. We're going to do a comparison probably next week. Uh, of all these different Samsung power adapters. That should be a fun one. I also have this HP power brick. If anybody want to see that, let me know down in the comments. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.